Dan, Willie, you've seen and played a lot of rugby. What makes this a unique event? I think from my perspective, uh, watching it for, for the first time, I've seen the Cape Town 10s and a lot of other rugby tournaments, and this has got exactly what Cape Town does. It's a lot of guys who love rugby, who love the game, who love the camaraderie that comes with the game, don't mind the occasional quiet beer afterwards and, and sometimes before the game, uh, but they get together to celebrate, they have a lot of fun, uh, put in a few hits, uh, try and remember just how good they were many years ago, uh, but come away with some fantastic memories and, uh, and a celebration of the game that we all love so much. Yeah, for me it's, it's very similar to what Dan said and um, nowadays with the professional era and we're seeing now with kids being identified, being put into academies and then they miss out on what's fun about rugby and that's actually going out, trying your best for the time that the referee blows the whistle and then after the game you sit down, you analyse it and you spend quality time with your friends. I mean I've spoken to a number of the professional players that are here or former professional players and a lot of them have said exactly that, that thing that they missed in their career was actually not getting to meet the opposition that much. Yeah, I think there's a World Cup on the horizon in this part of the world. We've seen a lot of our South African professionals move over to, to play in Japan. I think maybe uh, years ago it might have been a, a, a sort of a retirement type journey, but the, the quality of rugby now in Japan is incredibly high. I speak South Africans coming back uh, and they speak of a, an increasingly strong league and division. Uh, and there's more and more excitement and interest here. And you look at this particular tournament, I came over expecting to mostly see expat sides, but there are a lot of uh, locals playing in the game, clearly with a passion for rugby. Uh, and that only speaks well of the future of the game in this part of the world. Yeah, and I think that Hong Kong really is it was the blueprint. You know, the Hong Kong Sevens is where everybody went. That was the mecca um, for Sevens. And it suits the Asians as well, the, the style of Sevens. And I always think they struggle at 15 a side because obviously the, the size and the set piece, scrums and lineouts. But Tens and Sevens is where it's, it's developing and growing. And I spent seven years living in Japan playing professional rugby there. And um, I can only say that that competition is just getting better and better. They'll have a super rugby team there next year and um, so it's only going from strength to strength. Yeah, it's uh, seventh year this year, uh, so not being on quite as long as Bangkok, uh, but a, a really strong tournament. We've had some uh, some big names come over. We haven't quite managed Willie yet. We don't have that sort of budget, but uh, we've uh, had the likes of uh, Timmy Horan, Jeremy Paul, Tana Umanga uh, all come over. A lot of the big South Africans play. Uh, we had a crowd of about 20,000 this year, uh, over 2,000 players. So it's become a, a real landmark fixture and a real destination fixture, uh, and one that uh, that has a lot of hallmarks of the Bangkok event. So I think. This is a circuit growing, social rugby players like to do as many as they can and uh, I think there are lots of guys who'd like to have Bangkok and Cape Town checked off in the same year. <laughs> do you have anything to say about that? No, I just want to say that I can't, I can't wait for the uh, the invite. I've been invited a number of occasions except it's clashed with work commitments back in New Zealand so hopefully if things change, maybe my job or Cape Town change a date, who knows what happens in the future. Yeah, I first met uh, the uh, the bleach blonde bombshell from Bangkok uh, at the Cape Town Tens a number of years ago. Uh, he allegedly played prop forward for Canada in the World Cup. Nobody seems to be able to find any television evidence of this. Uh, but he's come over, he's always got a smile on his face, he's great value in Cape Town. Uh, and now we've seen his own events here. And uh, I think you, you get a real feel for an event uh, from the type of person who's behind it. Uh, this is obviously a real act of passion for Eddie. He's uh, poured his life and soul into this, he's made it something special. And I see him on the guitar last night playing in the band uh, he's probably the single most versatile prop forward in history yeah he is one of the only guys that actually can orchestrate and be on the stage as well at the same time because he can multitask but yeah he's, he, he is the Steve Jobs of amateur rugby he's a guy that's passionate he, he's a visionary he wants it to develop and to grow and he wants to keep some of the old traditions that we have in rugby alive and nothing disappoints him more than people who don't enjoy themselves when they're at an occasion like this and how can you not enjoy being in Bangkok? Uh, I think we're going to see uh, a lot of guys realising they're not quite as fit, fast or skillful as they perhaps thought they were. Uh, we're going to see some quality rugby. We're seeing the ancients play. Those are guys who are all 50 years or over. Uh, so uh, the clash of uh, shoulder on catheter bag as, uh, as that game unfolds later on. But we're also going to see a really quality final. I've seen some teams yesterday playing very quick, very aggressive running rugby. It was lovely to watch. Uh, and I think this tournament for all the beer and the camaraderie and the laughs and the frivolity is going to end on a particularly high rugby note and that's as it should be. Well it's his 10th anniversary and um, so to be here for the 10 years the Jam Boys and the 
there's been two other sides that have been to every single tournament. I think the Jam Boys could upset because Southbridge is a side from New Zealand. They're a bit serious, so they might not get invited back because I don't think they went out last night, which is a, just a big no-no. You've got to go out. Yeah, right. um, so they might be um, not sent the invitation next year. But I agree with Dan. I think that um, the level of rugby, what we've seen, and um, we tried to get him in the ancient game, but um, they didn't have any small size jerseys. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks for your time.